Father, the great Jehovah I am that I am. You're the one that we love. Our desire is on you. Our hope, our expectations. Thank you so much for this first day of the year 2023. We've come to hear you speak to us. I ask, Lord God, that you anoint me afresh. Make my tongue like the pen of a ready writer. Let me speak a word in season to him that is weary. Anoint me. And let me speak as your oracle. And as the word of God goes forth from me, let it do a tangible, eternal, and an internal work to free men, to deliver, to prosper, to bring grace, wisdom, favor, divine help, and every good thing that you have for your people in 2023, that this word shall not return void, but it will accomplish the purpose for which you have sent it. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. You may be seated. I said that this morning God is going to make me tell you how to live long and not bother about death. Some people are not hearing me. I said this morning I'm going to tell you how to live long and not bother about death. You know that 2023 many people are dying and they will die. But I will show you a secret. <laughs> the secret for longevity the secret for life and life abundantly. The secret that will enable you to live and fulfill the purpose for which you were created. And let me say to you that if you have not fulfilled the purpose for which you are created, you have been created, you have no business living the world. Amen? God says with long life in Psalm 91 verse 16. Let's look at it. With long life. Long life. What is long life? What is long life? Please make, give me your own definition of long life. With long life, will I do what? In case you didn't know what long life is, God has said what long life is from that scripture. I satisfy you. So when you are not satisfied, your life is not long. Uh -huh. Am I, am I talking to Christians this morning? Will I do what? Satisfy you. So if you're not satisfied, will you call it long? Uh -huh. God says, I will satisfy you. Okay. If I give you food to eat right now, I bring maybe a bowl of rice or somebody here, go and eat New Year's rice. You don't even know how you get it, but when you get home, it will be there waiting for you. <laughs> <laughs> those days when I come to church and uh, I go to church I'll, uh, I'll just be thinking God when I get back home what will I eat and God has always been faithful sometimes when I get back home food is already prepared for me Amen. so I give somebody that word this morning and you'll get to a point that not only will you be asking what will I eat you will be giving people food Amen. <laughs> praise the name of the Lord and so God says, with long life will I satisfy you. So if you're not satisfied, so I bring you a bowl of rice. And I say, eat. Maybe in my pot, there was five cups. So I decided to put all the five cups in your plate for you. If your stomach capacity is not up to five cups, <laughs> when you're satisfied, would you take your hands off? Even some greedy babies. You know, some babies are greedy. They eat and eat and eat, and the thing will come out from their nose. <laughs> but when you are satisfied, you know that you are. Let me tell you when you will be satisfied. When you see your children, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren. I said your great-grandchildren. And they are just around you. Your children are married. They have their own children. Your grandchildren are married. They have their own children. And if you want to be like Pastor Grace, you will see great, great grand. 
Uh huh. Some people don't believe. See now, see, I'm not talking to unbelievers. See some people here. You say God has said 70 and 80. You're quoting it wrongly. Oh. You're quoting that thing wrongly. Because 70 and 80 happened to the rebellious Israel that God wanted to wipe them out in the wilderness because they had rebelled. So God says, this generation, the whole generation that came out of Egypt, you won't enter the promised land. So he had to clear them. So he allowed their lives to be 70 and 80 so they can clear quick, quick, quick. So that the younger generation can enter. But in this church, we don't have rebellious people. Amen. The number of your years is 120. So keep that at the back of your mind. So that when the enemy comes up against you and tells you that there's a certain sickness that has to do with age, you beat him black and blue. I'm beating Satan black and blue every day. Because there's nothing, nothing like that. Nothing like that. And if you have sickness in your body, start to clear them. It can go. God can do a reversal of every odd or anomaly in the DNA or the genetic code of your life. Change it. So that what you inherited from your father and mother will just be changed. And that's what God is doing. That's part of my message for longevity. But let me show you the method. Go to uh, Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. Let's start from verse 25. Hmm. Therefore, I say to you, take no thought for your life. This is where the problem of living well and living long starts for some people. Take no thought for your life life hmm. did god say be careless with your life no he just said don't bother about it what you shall eat what you shall drink no you for your body what you shall put on is not life more than meat and body more than raiment see the problem of the world came from sin and sin huh, is a distortion of the life of god and sin is the genesis of death. If you take sin out, death is gone. So God is saying, don't worry. When he created Adam in the Garden of Eden, Adam did not have any worry. Did he? Was he looking for food to eat? Was he looking for clothes to wear? The glory of God covered Adam. It was when they sinned that the glory left them and they saw their nakedness. That's why when you come to this church, the first thing they teach you, because here we, no, we don't bury people. The first thing I teach you is keep away from sin. Sin of omission and sin of commission. Stay away. Let God begin to deal with the things that you had inherited from your father and your mother and reverse those things for you so that you can live long and enjoy life. Amen. So if you're here, you're still mm, 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 struggling with sin. I don't condemn you. I'm just begging you to have understanding. And if you're struggling, you can come to Pastor Grace and say, Pastor, please help me. And I will show you an easy way to live without sin. And somebody here does not believe that they can live without sin. No, you can. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Because when God created man, he never intended that man should die. But sin came in and man died. And Jesus said, I am come that you might have life and have it how? But before he said that, he said the thief cometh to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Who is the thief? Who is the thief? How did he come? Through sin. How did the devil come into the world? Through sin. So what does he do? Kill, steal, destroy. In this church, this morning when I, I got up and I was praying and, um, and talking to the Lord concerning the service. He said to me that there is a thick cloud of glory that is so thick that Satan cannot penetrate this church. No, you don't understand. You don't understand that some of you should have died long time ago. No, you don't understand. You don't understand that there are some diseases that came to you that should have taken you out. You don't understand it. He said that the thickness of the glory in this place cannot allow Satan to penetrate. So he started by telling you, do not worry. 
When you start to worry, you put yourself under pressure. Worry for anything. What to eat, what to drink, what to wear. That's not your business. You see, if you understand what I'm, t I'm teaching you today, that's not your business. You have put the cart before the horse. That's the problem. That's the problem of the church. God never created you to take care of your life. He can take care of your life. Amen? He's, he created you to take care of his business. Then he will take care of your life. And I'm going to show you how. So that you can live longer. Nobody here is dying young. Amen? 80 years, you're still very young. I hope you know. In this church, 80 is still a babe. If you like, see yourself 80 years old. When you look at me, you'll be ashamed. <laughs> so take no thought. Let's go back. Therefore, I say to you, do not worry by what to eat. Life is more important than all those things. Verse 26. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not. Somebody get this truth I'm teaching you today. They sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into bands. Yet your heavenly father, your father feeds them. Are you not much better than they? Which one of us says like a bird? You don't have, <laughs> so you're better than them. Let's go. The next verse. Which of you taking thought can add a cubit to your stature? Is there anybody like that? Okay. So. The next one. And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. I'm talking about 2023 because a lot of people will toil. But you should be out of toiling. Yet I say to you, even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. In fact, God is saying the lilies, they were better than Solomon in all of his glory. That's to show you how God can take care of you. Let's go. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which is today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, not shall he not much more clothe you? O ye of what? That was an indictment. The reason why a lot of Christians are toiling and co murmuring, complaining, worrying, and everything. O ye of what? This year, your faith will increase. I say your faith will increase. The next verse. Therefore, again, he's telling you, on account of what I'm telling you, take no thought, saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? Wherewith all shall we be clothed? How shall I live? With which money shall my children go to school? Don't pierce yourself and kill yourself. Let's go. The next verse. This is the key. The next verse. 33. But, okay, go to 32. I'll read that one because some people here need to hear that one. After this, all these things do the Gentiles seek. Who are the Gentiles? The unbelievers. The unbelievers, they are running the rat race. And you want to go and join the rat race? Even if you win that race, you'll become a rat. What kind will I drive? They are never satisfied. And the Bible says that godliness with contentment is great gain. You brought nothing into this world, you'll go back with nothing. You came with nothing, you struggle for everything, and you go back with nothing. So why don't you understand what God is trying to tell you now? And if you understand this thing that I'm telling you, you will lay up gold like dust. He said, this woman, what's wrong with you? I said, if you understand what I'm, I'm, I'm trying to teach you, you will lay up gold like dust. It will not enter you. It will not, it will not affect you. You will make it. And when you're leaving this world, when Jesus is coming, you will be singing hallelujah, 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 and be going because you have seen the travails of your soul. Amen? Praise the name of the Lord. So go to the next verse. The Gentiles are looking for this. But your heavenly father knows that you have need of all these things. Does God not know that you have need for school fees? Does he not know that you have need for a new house? Does he not know that you have need for a new car? 
Pastor Grace. Do okay, he knows. Does he not know that you need to look good? Does he not know that your children must go to school? Your heavenly father knows that you have need. And he said, I will supply all your need. All the things. But verse 33, this is the key I'm giving you. And I'm going to dwell on this uh, verse 33. In line with this complete takeover. So that you can understand what God wants to do with your life. But seek ye what? First. Seek ye first. The kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be what? Are dead unto you. They are just are dead. Are dead. And uh, seek ye first. Can you imagine somebody that has been employed in, the, um, let's say, Central Bank? Central Bank has given you an employment, and they tell you that your salary is going to be six million in a year, and they tell you your house allowance is five hundred thousand every month. They tell you that your car allowance is two hundred thousand every month, and then the moment you get into Central Bank. You go to the MD or whatever and say, give me my car allowance. Give me my house allowance. What does that mean? It is added to your salary. Just work. It's addition. So what you are fighting for doesn't make sense. Give me car. Give me cloth allowance. Give me. He said the, the man will tell you work first. I be at the end of the month, all those things will be added. Mm -hmm. You get that understanding. This is where Christians are missing it. They look for every other thing that God said, don't look for. <laughs> and they forget the weightier matter of the law. Go back to that first. Seek ye first. Seek ye first. The kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Except you are dishonest. Then you will make this word of God to be a liar. That God does not know what he's talking about. And there's no dishonest person in this church. Amen. All these things shall be added unto you. So what is the kingdom? What is the kingdom? And what is the righteousness? Open to Romans chapter 14 verse 27. Let's, let's try and get it. Romans 14 27. If it's not there, then look for it. Please open it first so that we'll know whether it's there. Romans chapter 14. Okay. Please look for it. The kingdom is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Somebody get the scripture, please. If it's not there, get it. Romans what? 1417. Okay, not 27. For the kingdom of God is what? It's not meat and drink. What did he tell you not to look for? Meat and drink, food, clothing. But the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. But what? Somebody say righteousness. righteousness. Say it again, righteousness. righteousness. Number two, what? Peace. Number three, join the Holy Ghost. Now let me break it down for you. Because once you get this thing, once you get what I'm telling you today, every other thing is free in your life. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. What is the problem of humanity? Sin. Sin is a problem of humanity. So once you're born again, the first thing that you have to seek in your life is to allow the righteousness. You have received righteousness from God when you're born again. Allow that righteousness to, to translate, to be translated to your will, your mind, and emotion, and you start to do right things. I will say that again. But before I say that again, let me tell you something. You are a spirit. You are a what? A spirit. 
So when they call spirit, don't be afraid. You ask, we are spirit. <laughs> you live in a body. This body. What you see here is not Pastor Grace. Pastor Grace is a spirit. Then Pastor Grace lives inside of this body. This body is the cloth of my spirit. And it looks like my spirit exactly. If this body were out, the spirit will just be, you will still recognize Pastor Grace. Now, you are a spirit. You live in a body. But you possess the will. A soul, the soul, the soul. The soul which is your will, your emotions, and your what? Your intellect, your mind. Your mind. You possess it. Where is your soul? The soul, there is a connectivity between your spirit and the soul. Okay? The soul is around this area, and the brain is the clothing for the soul. Please, hear me, hear me. Because when they go to church, we know they understand things. May God give you understanding today. The brain is the clothing of your soul. Whereas the body is the clothing of your spirit. Now, the soul consists of your will. Your emotion and your intellect. And those three areas have to be developed if you're going to do righteousness. They have to be developed. Your will has to be humble for you to accept the will of God. It's not automatic. I'll show you. I'll show you a way out. Don't, don't even, just hear me. I will, I will teach you how to do it. Your emotions have to be controlled by the power of the fruit of the spirit. And the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faithfulness, meekness, temperance, and patience. That's the fruit of the spirit. If your emotion is not controlled by the power of the fruit of the spirit, you can't do righteousness. You'll just be doing iniquity. You'll be getting angry. You'll be fighting people. You'll be quarreling. You'll be you just do bad things. And then you become like your father, the devil, in that area. That's what I said yes, yes, okay, this morning. Because the people, the, peop the people did not allow the, the, the power of God to affect the way they, their, their thinking is. So when Christ was presented to them, they just wanted to kill him. That's why he said to them, he said, you, you say you're born again, you're a seed of Abraham. How come you want to kill me? You want to kill me because you're like your father, the devil. And the loss of your father, you're doing. For your father is a liar. And the father of lies. Are you here and lies are flowing anyhow in your mouth? You're a child of the devil. You say, I am born again. Please, reconsider yourself. Reconsider yourself. Now, if, if I make a mistake and I say, God, please, I've lied. Forgive me. He will forgive you. But do not make sin a practice. Amen? He will forgive. What's, there's no sin that God cannot forgive. But don't make it a practice. Don't practice it. Don't practice it. Jesus. So, your seat, the seat of your will, your will has to be, to be humble. A lot of Christians are stubborn, rebellious. And that's why when the will of God is coming to them, they can't, they can't hear. They are, they are perpetually stubborn. And because of the stubbornness and the rebellious nature of their will, they toll towards the, 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 the will of Satan and they make Satan their Lord without even knowing. That's why you have to allow God to break your will. When Jesus had to go to the cross, what did he say? Not my will. But yours be done. Have you got to a place in your life that you say, God, you know, this thing I really want to do. But ah, I need your will. When you get to that point, your will will be broken by God. 
and you'll be more humble. Because a humble person is somebody who receives the will of God above his own preference. God has called you to do this for him. He said, no. God has told you to obey this. You say, no, no, no. You're just self-will. And a self-will and a rebellious person is somebody that Satan will have mastery and control over your life. And you can't really live as long as you should. Because you need your will to align with the will of God to allow you to do the things that are right before God to overcome sin. Ah, Father God, today, 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 today. And your emotions. Your emotions. You know what your emotions are? That part of you that gets angry, gets offended, gets sad, gets whatever, weary, all those complaining things in your heart. They're part of your emotion. Your emotions must never be controlled by your situation. If your emotions are controlled by your situations, you will not be able to do right things. You'll always be doing wrong things. So how will I allow my emotion to be controlled by God by just meditating on the fruit of the Spirit. In Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness. This is something you have to do daily. You have to seek this kingdom. If you don't seek this kingdom, no other thing shall be added unto you. You'll be struggling. And at the end of the struggling, you find out that you have nothing to show for your struggle. Meekness, temperance, against such, there is no law. Satan cannot touch you. Those are the keys that will enable you to live successfully, have wealth, and enjoy wealth with long life. Emotions controlled. Controlled. Have you some, seen some people? We're all nice people in church, oh. Very nice people. But just get out of church and let somebody push you a little bit you see what will come out of some Christians. I've heard a Christian, somebody I'm pastoring in this church, telling somebody on the phone, I will kill you for money. I say, if I hear that again from you, I send you packing from this church. You don't belong here. We don't kill for money here. We are not, we are not ritual killers. Amen. We give life. No matter what people are owing you, allow the emotions of God walk past, walk up past. And how will you be able to do that when you keep meditating on righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost? That's the kingdom. That is what we are talking about complete takeover. Your will, your mind, your emotion, your body to be completely taken over by the power of God and the life of God and the fruit of the spirit. Once you have this, three things will happen to you. You have wealth in abundance. I said you will have wealth in abundance. Number two, sickness will be out of your body because you're keeping the laws of God. Do you know that the greatest problem that kills people is stress? How long have you been stressing for? It's how long you'll be sick for. You put your head at night to sleep. You can't sleep because you're stressing. The school fees has not even come. The time to pay school fees has not come, but you can't sleep again. And so by that, oh shit, <laughs> I've touched some people. By that action, you're now paving a way for the enemy to give you direction instead of having your peace. Give me Isaiah 26 verse 3. Peace. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's the kingdom. Thou will keep him what? In what? Whose what? Mind is stayed on because he what? Trusted in thee. Your mind must be stayed on God. Your mind must be stayed on God. If your mind is not stayed on God, you will not have peace. And the kingdom is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. All other things shall be added. I said all other things shall be added.
I said, all other things shall be added. I know that all other things shall be added. I'm a witness that all other things have been added. I never stress. Do I have challenges? Yeah. Do I worry? God forbid. Don't worry. Worry for what? To worry means that you are underestimating the power of your God. You're telling God that he cannot perform. That's why you worry. And you know the antidote for worry? More prayer. More prayer. <laughs> when I have any situation, I put it before God. I pray hours, hours, and hours. I can pray one prayer for the whole week. Then peace comes. <laughs> <laughs> more prayer more prayer the, the, the people here who don't like prayer don't know what, what you're going to become oh, with that prayer eh? Eh? Sit down, so you don't pray you know why he's telling you don't pray because he knows that once you pray you will cripple him he knows that the moment you make prayer a pattern in your life because the word of God says pray without ceasing. He knows that the moment prayer becomes a part and parcel of your life, he has lost a grip over your life. So he will distract you, he will fight you, he will, he will give you every other thing to do but prayer. He will tell you to run around in the morning and not pray. He will tell you how you have to go to work early. How the customer is calling you so that you will not pray. He will tell you how to open your shop at 5 a.m. So you will not pray. So you will not pray. So, righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That is a kingdom. And that kingdom is basically what God wants you to pursue right now. The complete takeover is a complete takeover of your will your mind, your emotion, and your body. Sickness cannot attach to you now. Where will it come from? How you go take to? In fact, the ones that were there, God will be removing them as you seek the kingdom, as you seek the righteousness, as you're doing right things, as you're allowing the power of God to control your emotions. I walk into my house, I told my, one of my sons, I said, put an amount of rice in this container, in this bag, and I want to give it to someone. And I just mentioned someone lightly, and, and I passed. By the time I came back, the guy has carried the whole container of rice, the bag, of, or the, the uh, whatever uh, amount she put, and went to the security man at the gate and gave. <laughs> so what should you do at that time? You get angry. You start to fight. You I just looked at him. I said, God has blessed the security man. Because it was actually the security man of the church that I wanted to bring that one to. But he misunderstood. So I had to pack another one and came to the security man in the church and gave. Your emotion. At that point, some of us can beat kill. Your son, like what? Did I send you? I just looked at him. I said, Next time, always confirm. Have two witnesses. <laughs> Amen. So you allow your emotions. Oh, yeah. and many things have happened in recent time. This thing, practically, I'm telling you, it's possible to live like that. Amen. I came back, I'd already told them what they needed to do, what the kind of things they needed to have for lunch. When I came back, they did the exact opposite of what I said. <laughs> And I looked at them. I just walk up as I laugh. Do you know that this pastor that is telling you this thing, years before now, that, that thing now war. Do we understand? It's progressive. It's progressive. I told you yesterday that if you planted a banana tree and then the banana tree grew overnight and brought forth fruit, wouldn't you be afraid to eat? So also, the fruit of the spirit, it will take time, but you have to constantly try to develop. Amen? Seek that thing. That is one thing that you have to seek, nothing else. 
When you wake up in the morning, seek the kingdom. I want to do righteousness today. I want to have peace today. I want to have joy in the Holy Ghost today. And the day that you say, I want to have joy in the Holy Ghost, that's the day that your mechanic will give you big trouble. So what should you do? You know what I do? I'm telling you practically. This is a pra These are things that Satan uses to kill people. So I, 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 just, I just raise up a song. I have joy, 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 joy overflow in my life. Do you always sing in church alone? You're going to be miserable. If your song is only in church, you don't know how to sing in your room. You don't know how to sing when you're driving your car. You don't know how to sing when you're in the market, when they're telling you that the rice that you used to buy 20,000 is now 50,000. And you had gone with 25,000. <laughs> you don't know how to sing. When life offers you bitter leaf, don't cry. You. Use it to make a goosey soup. Don't worry yourself. Don't worry. You see, the problem that many people will not live long is because of their worry. Worry has a way of bringing age to you. You never reach 50. You're looking like 80. The Bible talks about Ephraim. He said, gray, gray hair here and there. And he doesn't even know it in the book of Micah. He was talking about Ephraim. You never hold. I see some people, they never hold. They, their hair don't turn gray. At the age of 30, all your hair is gray. A young man, I went for a wedding. <laughs> I went for a wedding. Uh, I've gone to two weddings in recent times. But the one that uh, I wasn't officiating, I went for that wedding. And I saw the groom. The groom is a young man, but full of gray hair. The beards were all gray. But I could know that this is a very young person. Then I went for another wedding. This was when I arrived. Everything scattered. Thank God I have a witness. <laughs> you were there with me. We first and foremost drove around to look for venue. I tired to look for venue. And I was one of the officiating ministers. In the process of looking for venue, my car was almost hit twice on the road. I said, Jehovah, I was, in fact, I said, God, just have mercy on me. So eventually, I called the main officiating minister, and you know what he said to me? He's standing on the road waiting for me. <laughs> the wedding that was supposed to start at 10 o'clock, this is 12 o'clock. Oh. He's standing on the road waiting for me. I said, Jehovah God, which one is my own now? So when I entered the hall, everybody was tense. The main minister was tense. Everybody was tense. But because I have my emotions controlled by the fruit of the spirit, I calmed all of them down. I said, calm down, calm down. I'm, going to I'm taking over, I'm taking over. Just don't worry, I'm here, I'm here. Things are going to be normal. May you enter a place and things become normal. And brethren, I took over. I took over the atmosphere. I took over the program. I took over everything. By the time the wedding finished, everything went beautiful. And the man said, name your price. What can I give you? I said, don't give me anything. Just glorify God. Emotions controlled by the fruit of the spirit will give you control over adverse situations. The moment you begin to get anxious, angry, Satan takes over. Anytime you see nyara nyara, you see the devil. I tell my children, where you see your head is going like that, shh, 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 shh. Oh yeah, calm down, calm down. Now Satan, they go so. Calm down. Peace. Be still. Peace. Be still. When they came to Lazarus, to Jesus, and said, Lazarus, Lazarus, he knew Lazarus had died. He sat still for how many days? Two days extra. He sat still. He wasn't moved. You, they didn't even call you. Don't cry. 
Nobody is dying in your family. Nobody is dying in your family. Your children shall live and not die. Your parents shall live and not die. Your grandchildren shall live and not die. Your sisters and brothers shall live and shall not die. If you have a grandmother here, keep her. Amen. So stop panicking. Stop panicking. I told one of the people, thank God you gave the testimony. They used to call me 2 a.m., 1 a.m., 12, anytime. In fact, anytime. And I don't know how I'm always awake at that time <laughs> to be answering your calls. I really don't know. <laughs> but I'm always awake anytime. The one day I'd say, where's Alice? I said, at least don't ever call me again. I have taught you what to do. You know, I can teach you everything that I do. I live supernaturally healthy life. I will never be on any drugs until Jesus comes. Amen? Amen. Amen. You know, there are people that live on drugs. If I take maybe vitamin, but... Nothing else. There will be no hypertension in your body. My own is already cleared a oh, long time ago. I am I'm already cleared oh, all those evil, debilitating, degenerative diseases. I've cleared them a long time ago. So when I'm talking, I'm talking to you. There will be no hypertension, no diabetes, no cancer, no heart failure, no kidney failure, none. No brain cell damage. That you start to forget things. You're too young and you start to. Man, but can you face it, me? You're not old. <laughs> You're not old. You have started to forget people's name. Hey, what? That person here, I cast out the devil in the name of Jesus. I won't call you out. That's not the problem here. The issue is that you're not old and you're, you're forgetting people's names. You want to remember? Ah. Uh -huh. It will take you time. <laughs> yeah. It's out. It's out. Don't bother. Don't bother. Do you know that brain cells can be recreated? Do you know that your muscles can be toned? And that your skeletal system can be rearranged so that you are strong as strong, as old as you are, you will never bend or carry walking stick. Amen. At 85 years, you now carry walking stick. Who tells you that old age is synonymous with Ben Ben? Who gave you that lie? Or with sickness? Who gave you that lie? Nobody here shall carry any walking stick. There will be no paralysis in this house. There will be no paralysis. Oh! You lift up your hands until Jesus comes. Amen. Your legs will be lifted up until Jesus comes. Amen. You walk with your legs until Jesus comes. Amen. You wear your high heel until Jesus comes. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, they look at me now. Some people are afraid to look at my legs. They say, this woman. <laughs> and I can stand like this for the next three hours. You try it now. <laughs> But I reverse every disorder in your system. In the name of Jesus. Every wrong order. I reverse it for you in the name of Jesus. So seek the kingdom. Seek the kingdom. This is what I'm seeking every day. How do you do that? One, when you wake up. Don't say hello to anybody. Don't rush to the marketplace. Don't go to open your shop. Lie down, sit down, kneel down. And pray for at least one hour in tongues. You clear? <laughs> that's, that's foundation. Then after that, after you've done the praying for at least one hour, you open this, your Bible. This is where everything about your life is found. Every day of your life, God will be giving you directions from the Bible. I gave a man an, an, uh, uh, an order. I, I told him at a certain time, I'm getting an amount of money available to you. And I didn't have the money. But I know my word has gone forth. 
One morning, I was reading my Bible, and I got to the book of Revelation, a place there, and I just saw it. Consider it done. I jumped. I said, thank you, Father. The money came. Many things you're struggling for. When you open your Bible, God will speak to you. And every word of God has the power to create for you what you're looking for. So when you're too busy to read your Bible, you're omitting something that should give you life, victory, deliverance every day. So this Bible, everything about your life is encoded in this Bible. Please, brethren, listen to me. Listen to me. Don't be religious. Everything that you will ever become is coded in this Bible. So when you open it, the Holy Spirit opens your spirit. And the ones that belong to you, you will find it every day. Amen. It was in the Bible that I was reading that I saw that the Lord said to me, he will make me to lie down in green pastures. And the two words green pastures just came up and stood like that as it were before me. And then the Lord spoke. I'm sending you to a town called Calabar. I was not here, but I was born here. He said, go there. I started a work called Green Pastures for me. That's how I discovered my purpose. When Jesus entered the synagogue, my cool leprodose, the Bible says that they, opened, they brought him the scroll and he opened it. Then they didn't have a Bible like this. They had the long scroll. So they, he opened uh, and got to the book of Isaiah where it was written, the spirit of the Lord is upon me for the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor, to bring deliverance to the captives, to open the eyes of the blind, uh, and bring those people out of darkness who were in the midst of darkness. And he said, this scripture is fulfilled. He became the embodiment, the manifestation of the scripture. Every day you must be a manifestation of the scripture. For in the volume of the books is written of you. Don't be religious here. Read the Bible. Is that afraid? No. After you have prayed, read the Bible. What is prayer? Prayer is communication, talking to God. And how does God talk back to you from his word? So you that have been neglecting the Bible, have you seen what you have been missing? And in this church, I have a pattern for you to read the Bible. I have a pattern for myself. I read the book of Proverbs one a day. A proverb a day will take foolishness away. Because you have 31 Proverbs. So in one day, I will read. Like today is day one of January. I read Proverbs chapter one. I go to the book of Psalms. I read Psalms five chapters so that I can finish the book of, of Psalms every month. But for you, please read at least one chapter of the book of Psalms. Then you go to the New Testament. You read at least one chapter from Matthew. And this is a new beginning for you. I'm laying a foundation for new beginning for everybody here. That if you do what I'm telling you, you'll completely take over. Amen. You will take over. You will take over financially. You will take over life. You will take over physically. You will take over everything. You will take over. You will take over. You will take over. You will take over. Satan will not have a hold over your life. So you read Genesis 1. This is January 1. Read Genesis 1. Go to the New Testament. Read Matthew 1. Then read the epistle, Romans 1. You, by, that, by that, you have, you have you know, read like across the spectrum of the Bible. And then you're able to have like a balanced knowledge. And you grow it every day. You know the letter and you also have the spirit. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. I pray for all of us. Brethren, we're leaving. I'm closing, I'm closing. Oh, Father, have mercy. We're living in bad times. The foundation I'm laying for you now is a foundation that will enable you not only to live long, but to have wealth. I say not only to live long, but to have wealth. Stop the pursuit of wealth. Stop the pursuit of things. Stop the pursuit. I, I'm sh somebody said, ah, ma, oh, you mean nana day it up. Mm-mm, mm day it up. But don't allow your heart to be running after those things. Okay? Seek first what God tells you to seek. And then he will guide you. He will instruct you. He will direct you on how those things will come to you. Amen. Do we understand? Are we ready to do it? 2023. God is relaying foundation. And 
at the end of this year, 2023, I want to see many people here becoming great people. Financially, spiritually, materially, in all realms. Relationally, taking over completely spirit, soul, and body. The kingdom and every other thing will be added. New cars will now come. New homes will now come. Uh, new marriages will now come. Uh -huh. All the men that escaped marriage in 2022. You will not escape in 2023. I, I said that any man that is 30 and above and is not married should marry Abby. And some of them dodged. <laughs> they will not dodge this year. We'll have marriages. I said we will have marriages. I said we will have marriages. And it's the people that are married that are shouting more. The people <laughs> and the young women say, hey. shall we bow our heads? All other things shall be added. So what should I do? Seek the kingdom. Seek the kingdom. Seek the kingdom. Take your prayer seriously. Take everything that God is asking you to do seriously. Read your Bible daily. Confess the word of God concerning the fruit of the spirit. Meditate on it daily. Say it with your mouth. This book of the Lord shall not depart out of your mouth. Meditate on it. Say it every day to yourself. I am patient. I'm kind. I'm long-suffering. I do not allow my emotions to run haywire. I have peace. I have joy. I have, I have temperance. I do righteous things. I do not do iniquity. I love righteousness and I hate sin and wickedness. Hate iniquity. Love righteousness. Leprodose. I'm going to give like a call. You're here in this place. You're born again. No doubt. But other things have occupied you. And you never really gave time for what God says, give time for. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost, which is pursuing the kingdom. And today you say, ah, 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 ah. Father God, I repent. I want to pursue the kingdom, and all these other things shall be added. If you're that person, please pray this prayer out loud with me. Say it with all of your heart and mean it. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you now as a sinner. I don't want to be a sinner anymore. I believe with all of my heart that you died for my sins and you were raised up from the dead for my justification. I invite you right now, Lord Jesus, come take over my life. Take over my circumstances. Take over my will. Take over my mind. Take over my intellect, my emotions. Let it be controlled by the fruit of your spirit, my emotion. Let my will become more humble that I might submit myself to you and do your pleasure on a daily basis and then all these other things i know they shall come to me without stress if you're that person that prayed that prayer with me let me see your hand if you actually prayed that prayer let me see your hand up wherever you're seated let me see your hand up if your hands are up please step out your hands are up please step out it means all of us here are pursuing the kingdom 